Okay, now it's time. I've built all my assets. I've used them in my assets file to create all of my frames. Ended up with, with only 20 frames, pretty efficient to tell my nine, nine frame storyboard story. So how can I make it work? So I go to my timeline. Let me show you this again in case you're starting from scratch. So you go up to Window, you find Timeline. These are the animation tools within Photoshop. The type of timeline we want is called a frame-by-frame -frame animation. So it is not a video timeline. There are two types of timelines. So if you find yourself in a timeline that has little purple timing boxes like this, this is modeled after Flash after After Effects, after different kind of animation programs. We do not want that. We want this little icon in the bottom left of the timeline window, which is a frame by frame option. For some reason the button's not working. So, let's open it again. Come on. <laughs> oh, I think by showing you that, I just messed it up. Why well, wanted to go back? Okay, I'm gonna delete the timeline. There we go. So it's just because I had one frame already built. So I'm going to now create frame animation. This is the option you have, create video timeline, or create frame animation. Frame animation is what we're doing, frame by frame animating. So create frame animation. These are frames. They program the eyeballs in your layers. So in order to play through all of my layers as animation frames, I need to go to the timeline window options, which are in the upper right hand corner click on it and say make frames from layers. Frames are not the same things as layers. These frames are simply programming the eyeball to turn certain things on from your layers. I'm gonna drag the first frame to the trash. I'm not gonna hit delete because that would actually delete the layer. Instead, I'm gonna drag it to the trash when I wanna change a frame. Then I'm gonna hold down shift, select all, all of my frames and set a timing of 0.2 seconds. Let's try this pretty fast. Then I'm gonna go in individually to these frames, which show the crack forming, and I'm gonna speed those up to 0.1 second. So that's a lot faster, twice as fast. Oh, I didn't want this one to be 0.1, I want that 0.2. This point one, this point one, that I can leave point two. Now all these make this point. All right, let's see how it looks. It's a little slow because it's still rendering, but now it's gonna go at real speed, I hope. It seems slow still. Okay, now it's going at real speed. So I play it through a few times. I think, you know what? I don't like how fast that crack forms. It's more like a zipper than a crack. So let's slow it back down. Maybe do 0.2 for the first crack. Maybe do a custom. So you say other and then you do 0.15. You can go up to the hundredths place after the decimal. And then 0 0.015. Then let's play it through. Remember these are eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. So it's a lot of pixels to, to show quickly on screen because these are not rendered video files. This is just 
This is actually Photoshop mocking up a video file, but we're going to turn it into a GIF file, which is only 256 colors, and that will help it run a lot faster. Okay, you can see the movement of the cloud. I'm happy with that. It's so subtle in the background. You can see the changing of the fog in front and behind, even the shadow underneath. One thing I'm a little bugged by is how much glow there is around this foot as the fog, rec fog recedes, but I'm okay with it. So if this is my finished animation, and it is because today's the deadline, then I go to File, and of course I save it. Now all those timeline frames are built into my animation stage. So I can always go back and edit them. And there's lots of ways to, to edit them more within the timeline. Now to export it as a GIF, I go to Export, and I go to Save for Web Legacy. This is the only way to do it in the newer versions of Photoshop. And you'll already see kind of the retro colors because I have a lot of color changes going on in my animation. That's part of the charm. That's because GIFs are limited to, to no more than 256 colors. You can play around with the settings, but I tend to like the, the default settings. Though I'll often choose Instead of the quality being bicubic, I usually choose, choose bicubic smoother, but it doesn't really matter. You can play it through and see how it looks. I like that kind of graininess it has as a GIF animation. And I like its endless cycle, right? Because it's set to reset. And the only slight cut that exists is that the clouds reset. And that's it. So if I'm happy with that, I hit save. I'm going to keep my original file name. But it's now going to not be a PSD file. It's going to be a GIF file, a GIF or a GIF file, however you prefer. The guy who would who invented the, the GIF file, the graphic interchange format file type, which is one of the first digital imaging file types, uh, says you should pronounce it like the peanut butter, GIF. But because it stands for graphic interchange format and graphic has a hard G, I usually say GIF. It's going to go to the desktop. And then to test it, I simply find it on the desktop, there it is, right click on it, and open it in a web browser. So let me just open it in Chrome. Probably should have done Firefox because I already have it open. And that is the file you will put up into Canvas. Okay, while well, that is opening, now I need to go to my animation stage and I need to get this ready to output my refined storyboard. The first step to doing that is making sure you turn your rulers on. We're going to be doing layout, design layout within Photoshop. And the only way to do that well is to always grow things from the center. Make sure I got the, uh, Chrome is having trouble, so I'm going to force quit that, and I'm just going to test it in Firefox. I know some of you were noticing that Chrome was giving you strange error messages, so that's why we always have Firefox installed too. So it's probably because it needs an update. And it's opening in a new Firefox. I have no idea why. Okay, anyway. We'll move on. So to output our final storyboard, we need to change our animation from being a flip book into being a set of nine cards that we deal out on the table arranged like a comic book. 
Because right now, all of the layers, all of the frames are stacked on top of themselves. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my computer being so slow to open a web browser. OK, so let's do this. In Photoshop, you make sure that your rulers are turned on by hitting Command-R. Then with the rulers turned on, you use the Move tool and you drag guides, if you haven't already, to each side of your animation square. So you know when you shuffle cards, you kind of clean them up on the edges, you bang them on the table, that's what we're doing. Now we're going to do an extra step, just in case you did some fancy stuff in the frames, like you, you set one frame to have multiple things turned on, because you can do that. You can organize your frame where you have different opacities. You know, I could make a dramatic frame like that, where it goes like this, then this, than this, just to make it a little bit more shocking. Because not only does the timeline tool animate the eyeball and what layer it's showing, but it can also animate opacity and it can have multiple layers on at once. It can also have things like layer styles turned on specifically for individual frames. So there's a lot you can do with that. So an extra step, if that's what you've done, or even if it's not, it's just a good practice. So I'm going to take back that change. Is to do the reverse of what we did when we made the timeline. Instead of, whoops, instead of making frames from layers, we are going to make frames into layers. We're going to flatten the frames into layers. Make sure I got them all. Oh, I turned the wrong one on. Let me reprogram that. Good, good, good. OK, so to do that, I go to my topmost layer, and I go to the Timeline Options. And instead of Make Frames from Layers, now I'm going to flatten those frames into new layers. And it will take whatever I have in the timeline, and it will make them new layers on top of my old layers. And it will name them frame instead of layer. So you're going to see it. Ooh, here we go. This is how you can take a, um, like a film clip and output it as individual layers, individual film stills. And it's taken a long time, which it shouldn't. I don't care that Firefox updated. I just want to test my animation. Technology. And I'll ask for two-part verification at some point. Ah. How do we get anything done? OK, so now check out what I have here. I've got frames on top of layers. So after layer 20, I have frame one. So I'm going to delete all of my layers, including the background. Hold down Shift, hit Delete, get rid of all of those. I'm also going to trash all of my timeline frames, because I'm not animating anymore. I'm going to be moving stuff around, and that's really going to mess up my timeline frames. And I can just close the timeline window once I've done that. Now I've got a deck of cards. I've got 18 cards that tell my story. And they're all stacked on top of each other. So I know what my first card is going to be. But what I need to do is I need to build the table that I deal them on. So I'm going to go to Canvas Size. And I'm going to grow my canvas size to be 30 by 40 inches. We've done this before, a full print size. And that creates the table that I'll deal the cards. And then in the next video, this is just taking too long to process. I am simply going to move the, the images I want into the right positions 
on my chest.